say the case of posterior polar cataract with a pre-existing posterior capsule or opening on detailed examination and an ASOCT, it is evident that there is a break in the posterior capsule. On detailed evaluation, we can see these dark rings in the posterior polar cataract and this is enough evidence also. Sometimes these rings may show up as rings of red glow showing through the posterior polar cataract. We proceed by making an oval capsular axis, which I have shown in my very previous videos. I have a long series of posterior polar cataracts, nearly 800 plus posterior polar cataracts updated and the technique has been perfected to this date that even in case of a posterior capsular opening, we have never lost the cortex or the nucleus into the vitreous. So I go forward and describe my technique. So once an oval capsular axis has been done, this is a big advantage of getting the nuclear D segments out. And in case you want to scoop out the complete nucleus, you can just slip it out through the oval capsular axis. Also, we have to be very sure that we don't do a hydro dissection in a posterior polar cataract. Especially this case, if we do a hydro dissection, we will end up losing the nucleus or some part of the cortex into the vitreous before the start of surgery. We do create a lot of rings by doing hydro delineation. Now, we do a moderate vacuum and a moderate FACO of around 30 FACO power. We ensure that the complete cortical plate over the nucleus has been removed. While we are doing this, we ensure that we do not rotate the nucleus or the cortical plate because this itself will disturb the posterior polar adhesion and cause further breakdown of the posterior polar. We chop the cataract into 2D segments. Again, we try as much as possible not to rotate the 2D segments. Now you will notice that I rotated the phaco tip at one angle and without rotation of the nuclear segment, I did a side chop and removed one part of the D segment very, very slowly and carefully. Now this has ensured that I have debulked the nucleus, created a space into the bag and now again rotating the phaco tip in another direction, this gives me enough space to break another piece of the D segment. Now, these two half pieces of each D segment have been broken. This creates enough space in the bag for me to lift out the rest part of the D segment. And as you notice, this has been done in a very, very controlled manner. Having done this, now we have a cortical plate and an epinuclear plate which is stuck up at the back. Most of the part of the nucleus has been removed. Having done that, now I slowly aspirate the complete cortical plate here in this particular case. And now, as you will notice, once the cortical plate is out, there you can see the area of adhesion where there was a posterior polar adhesion. And while if you notice very carefully, there is an opening, a linear opening extending from one edge of the equator of the capsular bag to another. Now, before we withdraw our irrigating instrument, we ensure that we put viscoelastic, but never over pressurize the anterior chamber. Slight amount of viscoelastic is instilled, the case is re-evaluated and there you can see complete linear posterior capsular opening in the posterior capsular bag. Now this has been done, now we proceed, we know there is no vitreous loss as of now. So we do a controlled aspiration, irrigation aspiration of this remaining cortical part under a very very moderate height, the bottle height is 100, the vacuum is 430. And I use my machine to slowly enter the anterior chamber, make sure that there are no air bubbles before I start my irrigation because this can actually lead to extension of the posterior capsular opening and cause vitreous loss. Now what you will notice is that all the surgical procedure which was done till now was so meticulously planned that there has been no vitreous loss at any point. We will proceed to remove complete cortical plate over the posterior capsular opacity, sorry, posterior capsular opening and there is not a speck of vitreous which will be pulled up by the irrigation aspiration cannula. What you see is a very, very controlled removal of the cortex. Now, I am sure the visibility of the linear posterior capsular opening is there and you will notice that the opening is there, but there is no vitreous coming out of that posterior capsular brain. Now, again, a controlled removal of cortical matter over the edge of the posterior capsular op opening. It is not a good idea to do 
बाय मैनुअल एस्पिरेशन एटलीस्ट इन माय ओपिनियन बिकॉज आई हैव ऑपरेटेड दीज केसेस डूइंग अ बाय मैनुअल द चांसेस ऑफ द विटरस लॉस एटलीस्ट इन माय हैंड इज मोर आई एम वेरी वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट ऑफ डूइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेप यूजिंग अ कोएक्सियल इरिगेशन एस्पिरेशन बिकॉज देयर इज अ कंप्लीट वाटर टाइट चेंबर when you do this particular procedure but in case for people and surgeons who want to do a bimanual procedure it's a good idea to suture the main wound and then go for a bimanual cortical aspiration and there you will see how beautifully the cortex can be pulled over the posterior capsular opening and this is the very very interesting part this cortex is sitting right on top of the vitreous face and there it has come out so the pc break is not extending the last part of the cortex also is removed very very meticulously now as described earlier do not withdraw the instrument which is irrigating just put slight amount of viscoelastic just enough to inflate the chamber do not over pressurize the uh, anterior chamber and slowly withdraw your instrument once you've done that you can see a linear opening but the best part is there is no loss of cortex there is no loss of nucleus within the vitreous cavity now i will go ahead and do a vitrectomy because now i'm going planning to put in an iol in the now i will break the anterior vitreous face to do my vitrectomy i'll do a controlled vitrectomy only in the area where there is a pc opening because once i start putting my three piece iol that point there is going to be the break of the anterior vitreous face and that will cause trouble to me to dial my iol into the sulcus and also cause more vitreous loss than i can control so it's a good idea to do a complete anterior vitrectomy in this area you have to make sure that the turbulence of the fluid is not much otherwise the tear will extend through and through and extend to your anterior capsule once this is done i proceed to put a minimal amount of viscoelastic into the anterior chamber just behind the iris enough to create a space between the iris and the anterior capsule and now i'm putting a three piece iol this lens is manufactured by orolab india again i have no commercial interest now this is one of my few go to lenses which i always have in my stock in the operation theater and it always comes in handy the trick here is to push in very very less amount of viscoelastic otherwise you'll have the viscoelastic going into the vitreous and it may cause reactions raise intraocular pressure and cause a feeling of floaters for the patient so i use a very very minimal amount of viscoelastic now i enlarge the incision to 3.2 mm because this injector cartridge goes through 3.2 mm i turn the bevel sideways i ensure that the leading loop just goes behind the iris and as the lens unfolds i let the lens open up i'm not in a hurry and once this lens opens up i just dial the lens in place and and we'll see the lens takes the shape central positioning beautifully and what you see in the center is a posterior capsular opacity there is no vitreous loss into the anterior chamber and even once we close the case we will notice that there is no vitreous loss in the anterior chamber i use a different style of removal of viscoelastic in such cases i try and avoid using an irrigation aspiration cannula as far as i can avoid it i would suture this case first because i have enlarged the wound and my recommendation is in case you have a posterior capsular break during the surgery it's always a good idea to suture the wound even if you have a water tight wound because it's always more secure now i will just dial the place i will in place now since my wound is secure it's sutured now this is how i wash out my viscoelastic i dip the scleral wound i give short bursts of bss into the anterior chamber and this meticulously cleans up my anterior chamber of all the viscoelastic some users can go in and do a bimanual irrigation aspiration also with a low bottle height that would also not be a bad idea but it's always a good idea to low, use a lower bottle height and a low flow otherwise it can actually hydrate your vitreous and cause more problems i just put a meiotic in the eye i ensuring that the pupil is closing well there is no peaking there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber and once the surgery is over we will notice that we have a perfectly round pupil i will center now this patient was doing very well on the first day of post operative period 
the patient had unaided vision of 6 by 12 and over time the patient improved to 6 by 9 complete vision unaided and as you see again skill technique and patience always pays off thank you